Hello there retro gamers and welcome back to another repair video. Well, this one is shorter and simpler than some of the more recent ones I've released, but I think this repair is worth showing nonetheless, as it will hopefully be helpful for someone, and hopefully interesting to watch for the rest of you. Here we have another Atari Lynx 2. Yes, this is a different one from the previous videos you may have seen where I rebuilt the power circuit and then installed a McWill LCD and VGA mod. This one was bought in a pretty well-priced bundle on eBay. It came with a handful of games, as well as the console and some hookups, although the console was listed as not working, but it didn't list what it was. So it was a bit of a lucky dip, but with all the games and accessories, I thought I really couldn't go wrong anyway. And as you can see, it's in excellent cosmetic condition. Actually, better condition than the other one, if we're being honest. And powering on, you can see that the screen does work, and I can show you that all the buttons do too. But the one thing I did find wrong with this unit is the speaker. Listen to this. Now it doesn't actually really sound that bad when just showed by itself, but when you compare to what it sounds like when you plug headphones in, it's obvious that the speaker is probably blown. And no, that's not just what the speaker is supposed to sound like. Here's the same audio on my other Atari Lynx, which has a stock speaker as well. And here's another comparison with something that sounds a bit different. This is a bit more bass heavy, but it's obvious that the speaker is peaking out, even at low volumes. So in this repair, we're simply going to remove the old speaker and put a new one in. A little bit of soldering is required, but the speaker does seem quite easy to come across. So even if you're a novice, I have faith in you that you can do this repair. So let's get started with this assembly. If you've been watching my previous Lynx videos, you're probably well educated on how to do this by now, but if you're not, you wanna start by removing the batteries. On the surface, it doesn't really look like there's any screws at all. That's because they're hiding under these bumper pads. You'll wanna pry these off with a flat headed screwdriver and just keep them facing up as we'll want to re-stick these when we've repaired the links. The four screws are just your standard Phillip head as well. So you won't need any special screwdriver like when you're repairing Sega or Nintendo products. And while removing those four screws does allow the back cover to be taken off, there is one more screw holding the battery compartment in place. It is very important to note that this screw is smaller than the other four. This is because there are a couple of ribbon cables behind the battery compartment, and if you put a longer screw in, you risk piercing those ribbon cables during reassembly. So with that screw removed, we can pull out the battery compartment, and then there are those two ribbon cables to disconnect. Now, I always forget the name of these clip systems that the ribbon cables are plugged into. I'm sure someone in the comments section will educate me. But basically they are held in by these clips. So the ones in this links were surprisingly stiff, but they need to be pulled in a outward direction so the ribbon cable can safely be removed. It's very important that you don't try and force these out because if you break those clips or even wreck the ribbon cables themselves, you're in for a world of pain. After those, there are two more plugs to remove, one for the screen assembly and one for the speaker itself. These are not held in by any sort of clip system, so these can simply be pulled out. And there we go, there's the speaker. I wasn't able to source a speaker that has that clip attached. I don't actually think there is a version out there, although the speaker itself is quite common. So we'll be removing that speaker and desoldering that clip and then resoldering that onto the new one. Very simple stuff. And here's the replacement. If you're in Australia or New Zealand, this can be found from JCAR Electronics. It's a very basic 40 millimeter wide speaker. I'm sure this can be found online easily as well. It should be noted that this replacement is only eight ohms while the original is 16. But from my very granted limited research, it doesn't seem like this will be a problem. The original might go a little bit louder, but since it's blown anyway and I can't seem to find a 16 ohm 40mm replacement, this one will have to do. 
If you're buying locally like I did, I think this cost me something like $4. The speaker itself is held in using clips and I struggled to actually remove these while everything was assembled. So we'll be removing the speaker and button assembly and simply flexing it out. To remove it, there are six screws, four on the right, two on the left. Although there are another four smaller screws holding in the screen assembly. And with that, the speaker is free. There are only two wires for the connector. One for positive, one for negative. It doesn't get much easier than that. So yeah, I simply desoldered the connector. And I primed up the two solder pads on the speaker and then just simply reattached it. The speaker even indicates what's positive and what's negative. And the wires don't lie, black is negative, red is positive. Just make sure it's connected up the same way and you should be sweet. And once that's done, we can simply click it back into the speaker and button assembly and we can reassemble the whole unit. I won't show that here, but it's the exact reverse of what I showed before. And moment of truth. Ah, that's way better. We now have a fully working Lynx, using a part that only cost a handful of dollars. So you might be wondering why I bought this one when I just finished repairing the other. Well, it's a bit of a lame collector's thing, but I like keeping at least one console in fully original working order. I couldn't do that with the previous one since the original screen was completely bunk, but since the screen works with this and I only needed to replace the speaker, I can now use this as simply a collector's piece. I like having all my handhelds all out there next to each other, and the other one is a little bit unsightly since it does have a big VGA cable sticking out of it. Although ultimately, that will be the one I'll be using for play. But you know what? That's okay. I'm perfectly happy with this one just being for display, purely for my own satisfaction really. Anyway, that's the end of this video, a little bit shorter and simpler than the others, but hopefully it will be of use to someone, and hopefully the rest of you were entertained. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.